Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Well, let me give out the phone number first and foremost. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Kroll. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and a addiction medicine specialist. Thank you. All righty. Somebody must have emailed you something. No, I just do hearken back to that fax we got that called me a retard for sort of turning your uh, your your title into one big long limerick which is what you do for the next hour and 55 all minutes all right but so. i got it out clean at all the right. top yeah, of the show right, and right. that's all I, and my, i appreciate that that's all my contract uh, specifies mahalo adam west should be in here soon enough uh, those of you who've been living under a rock i'll tell you that adam west was uh tv's original batman for three years 66 to 69 He's done a bunch of other crap since then, and we're going to talk all about that. Now, he should have been here about 15 minutes ago, but maybe the Batmobile broke down or something. I'm not sure. This isn't the easiest place to find, but uh, I'm sure he will be in here soon enough. I listened to his tape today, and that's what he's peddling. And, and, you know, I'm going to be honest. When people come on this show, they have something to peddle. Sometimes it's just themselves, but we're all sort of peddling something. Mm -hmm. Except for Drew and I. I may be peddling a little talc, but he's got a couple of cassettes. And these cassettes are uh, Adam West Remembers 30 Years of Batman. And they're sort of like one of those books on cassette type of deals. Mm. And and I listened to it. And I, I was never the uh, huge uh, Batman fan. Mm. I mean, it was, you know, kind of uh, Americana. Everyone grew up with it and everything. But I wouldn't. I never had any comic books or anything. But I was listening to the tape as I was driving around doing errands today. And uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, it was interesting to hear him say things like, yeah. To this day, I am surprised when I'm asked to sign a lady's bosom. <laughs> what was that all about? We are a well-oiled machine, aren't we, Mike? What was that all about? Well, I said, say things like... To this day, I am surprised when I'm asked to sign a lady's bosom. Oh, man. If you hiccup, the show would sound great. So, he will be in to uh, talk all about his uh, adventures as the uh, Caped Crusader. But until then, we're going to the phones. Matt, 19, you're on Loveline. Hi, hey, guys. Hey. I uh, love your show. And I called about the uh, negative effects of having your nipple pierced. Uh, for a male? Yes. Well, you can get infected. Uh, I'm just talking, like, worse things. Like what? Well, I've heard, like, with some areas of your body, there's nerves that if they're hit, they can, like, freeze half of your body. Is, is there anything... I don't know what you're talking about, so, uh... Well, I've heard, like, if you pierce the top of your ear, there's a nerve up there that if it's hit, it'll freeze half your face. Uh, you, well, yeah, there's stuff that comes out near your ear that can paralyze your face, yeah. Yeah, like Spock did that but, in Star Trek. But, I mean, that's not half your body, believe me. Uh, let me tell you a place where you can paralyze your entire body, the groin. <laughs> you get like a uh, soccer ball or cassava melon yeah, in the groin. Are putting spirits to their groins now, right? I Doesn't guess so. Violence. All right. Well, I'm. I was talking about like a, blunt, a sporting blunt trauma, event. Blunt yeah. Trauma. All right. All right. So, Matt, you want to pierce your nipple? Yes. Uh huh. Why? Well, I just think it looks really cool. Mm hmm. I've always wanted to have it done, and I just I made an appointment to have it done Friday, and I just trying to get myself out of it. I guess. Do you, you feel like you're having difficulty defining yourself, Matt? No, not exactly. Well, why is it that you need to sort of hop on the nipple-piercing bandwagon in order to make a statement? I don't know. I just have a thing for piercing. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. That, that, whenever we talk to... I, I don't know what to say. Whenever we talk to people that get piercing, I, I love the calls about tongue piercing because the average response to why are you doing that, make me understand what it's all about, it's, well, eh, nothing better to do. It was Friday afternoon. Well, of course. It's a stupid idea. And they're rarely good answers for stupid ideas because that would make them smart ideas. Huh. You're rarely ever fooled in life. When you see some guy pulling up in, in, in a really god-awful $300,000 sports car or a horrible uh, fur coat or something, and you say, why'd you do it? They, stupid answer. Yeah, just was wanted there. to. Was, yeah, there. was there. I had uh, the money. All right. I was all bored. All right. Matt? Yes. Aren't you scared? Are you going to get a hoop? Yeah. Aren't you scared you're just going to get caught on something? No, not at all. All right. So well, a lot really of people nothing. obviously 
I'm sorry? A lot of people obviously do this, and there was a time when I would have commented that it's a sign of you know, maybe trying to master some abuse you went through when you were younger. But these days, it's such a stylistic event and so common that it really doesn't mean a damn thing. It's just a bad, it's a dumb idea. All right, but I'm going to go back. But, but let me just say, the people that do those sort of bizarre piercings and really heavy-duty piercings usually do have some pretty heavy trauma there. Well, it does turn into mutilation eventually, yeah. I believe, yep, after I you put enough holes in you. I agree. I mean, one or two, fine, but eventually it turns to mutilation. But I had an, an idea. This was months ago, but I'm going to revive it. I think uh, man and woman, mankind, should have extra parts with them for screwing with. Things you, know you can I mean? pierce like, and mutilate, whatever. Like a little mean. extra something. Not like the umbilical cord. Uh, something a little more permanent. Maybe just, man, we could leave that somewhere. No, like an that. extra something dangling off you that maybe you didn't use. Yeah. You know what I mean? That you could tuck in your pocket, wouldn't get caught on things. You could tattoo it. You could smack it around. You could pierce it. Instead of doing all these things, your penis, yeah. which is really something that you may use later on in life, you have this extra part. I haven't worked what you, out what that part is yet. What do yet. you call it? <laughs> True, you think I have a good answer for everything, yeah. don't you? Well, I thought you said you thought it out. I thought well, a lot about it. All right, we'll call it the, uh, we'll, we'll call it the uh, Adam Appendage. All right. It'll be named after Dr. Adam, who invented all right, We'll call fantastic. it something else. You smack the mic yeah, with thanks. your shoulder I'm 10 done. seconds into the I'm show. Done. All right, great. With your shoulder, though, Drew. Yeah, I know. You understand I, yeah, that? Yeah, it's bizarre. John, 25, you're on Loveline. Yeah, how you doing, Adam? How you doing, Dr. Drew? Good, John. Uh, Adam, I saw you this past weekend at HF Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, got to tell you, you got off pretty easy getting hit with the Mentos. I heard Jewel got beamed in the head with a Frisbee. I saw that, actually. There's been a little Jewel uh, controversy going. And, and here's what I know of the story, John. Jewel was uh, slated to play at the uh, HF Festival. Mm-hmm. And uh, Washington D.C., you know, fifty thousand people and whatnot. And apparently, she wasn't feeling well. Had some kind of serious problem, liver or kidney or something like that. One of the parts, the inside parts, the gushy parts, mm-hmm. the parts you use, the viscera, the viscera of life. And was not well. Showed up late. I remember it was like a half hour before she was going on, and the guys were walking up and down the hall. Where's Jewel? Can't find her. Blah blah. She came out. I was watching from the press box up top, where like uh, the the football guys, like John Madden and those guys, All right, well, call the you're game. You're cool, Adam. We know it now. All right. Yeah, well, they let me in there. <laughs> and she was up there, and she was doing a song, and it was like an acoustic song. She was strumming away on the guitar, and the crowd was sort of a raucous crowd. And it was hot, and everyone was loaded and everything. And about three minutes into her song, someone winged a frisbee at her. And I guess it kind of, like, hit her in the guitar and then ricocheted up and hit her in the chin or the yeah. neck or the boob or something. And uh, she finished the song and then sort of politely said thank you and walked off stage. That was the end of it. That was the end of that. So I guess when you're not feeling well, getting hit with a frisbee will just send you over the edge. <laughs> Oh, and Dr. Drew, everything that Adam told you he said to the crowd at the festival is true. Well, John, I feel I feel <laughs> greatly relieved now. Thank you. So, yeah, you're worse years than Yes, yes, wonderful. All right, John. Um, yeah, I, I just realized I can't let you travel anywhere without me. All right, well, you go next time. I don't care. Oh, Christ. John? I, I think I'm addicted to slam dancing. I've been doing this for at least 10 years now. Injuries do not seem to deter me at all. I'm starting to wonder about myself. I think it's borderline masochistic or something. Yeah. When there's no concert to go to, do you just throw yourself from uh, wall to wall in a no, hallway? No, I, I do get itchy, though. i, I got to have a... a since, good... since we've been kind of talking about self-abuse, uh, ha- self-mutilation, do you do you have any habits uh, along those lines? Have you ever cut on yourself? Do you ever get some piercings? Oh, tattoo? no, no, not at all. So it's purely the slam dance thing? Yeah. Yeah, John, that's something that everybody is into. I mean, it's no different than those uh, nature films. It's kind of like saying I'm into hang gliding or some, some other dangerous activity that's thrill-seeking. Yeah, well, you're into that context stuff. Yeah. I mean, look at all young boys especially. What do they do? They wrestle. They basically beat the crap out of their friends from age, you know, four or three or four till they get to like 12 or 13. Then they get into organized sports, which really is you beat the crap out of your friends, <laughs> but you got a number. And it's a little more organized. You'd be, and then you get into something else where you beat the crap out of someone. You get into slam dancing or whatever. I did all that crap. I played football. I used to go to the, the concerts and get in the mosh pit and everything. But at 25, you should get bored of it. It's time to move on. Well, I haven't really. That's the problem. Well, why don't you play hockey or rugby or something like that? Did it. Still do. Hmm. Okay. Well, John, 
Maybe you got a little brain damage because of all the contact sports you've been involved with, and that has sort of stunted your growth. So when you're 25 numerically, emotionally, you're only 15. Uh, is there like a 12-step or something you can do for this? I don't think like so. A... I don't think so. But, but I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I sort of get the sense that he may be a thrill seeker, and thrill seekers do have, tend to have addictive potential. Uh, but they're really... No, no. Like that. I mean, you go to emotions. Believe me, we have bigger fish to fry as a society than yeah. starting twelve-step programs yes. for for, for adults trapped in their adolescence. Though God knows that would cover a lot of people. Angela, twenty. Well, who who mosh? Hi. You're on Loveline. I have a question about um, married men masturbating. Okay, um, my brother-in-law, both of them. I have two brother-in-laws, and they're both married. I'm married, um, but they're both caught masturbating by their wives Mm -hmm. and um i haven't caught my husband doing it but i did ask him about it and um i asked him why do you guys do it and he just kind of said i don't know we just like pleasuring ourselves but i just want to know is this something healthy marriages um that happens well let me put it this way when a man gets married does he quit brushing his teeth (laughs) does he stop taking showers no does he quit watching tv no does he stop in, in enjoying the, the splendor of nature? <laughs> no. Then why should he stop this, this masturbation, which has been probably a better friend to him than, than his toothbrush or his hair dryer or his soap on a rope, depending on where he's putting it, throughout the years? I mean, this becomes your buddy. This is your guardian angel. Okay, but I'm there now. Yes, but you will never take the place of the hand. You can slow down the hand. You can uh, impede the hand. Sometimes the hand will even uh, go on sabbatical and gather a little dust, but ultimately the hand will always be back. Now, if I do ever catch him, would it be a good idea to just let him finish by himself or join in? Mm. Now, you'd think I would say join in, but these are kind of separate things. I've talked with guys about this a million times. Not No. Yes. Why have I never had that conversation with anybody? I do not count That's you bizarre. as I do not count you as a guy. Oh, for Christ's sake! <laughs> Technically, yes. I still haven't gone for a complete junk check, so I'm not sure. But Angela, mm-hmm. this is separate. It's not necessarily a sexual thing. Drew, please back me up here. I'm trying to, but I can't. Masturbation is not purely a sexual thing for males. It's it ha- is a way of life. It's it's, it's a, a habit. habit. It's a That's habit. right. It's something you do. Okay, so if I ever catch him, I should just close the door and leave him alone? Well, don't don't look at catching it. Okay. As a matter of fact, if he's ever in the room with the door shut, wait till he comes out. Okay. Even if there's a fire. Just, you know, <laughs> leave a note on the counter. Uh, dear, uh, you know, I had a problem with the crock pot. I hope you didn't mind, but I didn't want to disturb you. And if he's in the shower and the water's running interrupted for hours on end, don't tap on it. Don't okay. tap on the door. Give him his space. Ultimately, he's just going to resent you. If you uh, impede upon his masturbatory habits. Okay. All right? Okay, so it's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Okay, Look thanks. at it. Look at him as uh, practicing for you, except for he's thinking about other chicks he was with before <laughs> you. But <laughs> other than that, he's practicing with you. That, that's really... So maybe that's a function it serves. It sort of acts out that uh, wanderlust. You're cheating with your right side is basically what you're doing. I see, all right. Yeah, and... and it's true. You cannot masturbate to those who are in the same apartment or same house as you. It, it, it goes, it's a, a cardinal rule of, of, of masturbating. That's the first rule. Gwen, 19, you're on Love Line. What's the second rule? Hey, guys. Um, my question is about how can you turn a guy off by wanting him too much? How is that possible? Are you you, you want to know? Yeah. I, I guess that's know. why you're asking. Drew, did you... Yeah, I can think of a lot of things, but I'll hear what you have to say. Well, men are uh, hunters and gatherers. <laughs> they go out and hunt women, and they gather boobs and uh, you know other parts. Okay. And they're in that mode. They're in the. This is this is back to the Groucho Marx. Uh... Well, no, 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 Drew. Please do not confuse things for All right. a moment. All right. And when they go out, they're in sort of hunting mode. In, in the old days, they, you know, I mean, millions of years ago, they sat by fire, they rubbed a little mud on them, they had themselves a loincloth, they, you know, got into some kind of, uh, you know, ate a little peyote, and they, got, they, they summoned up some kind of buffalo spirit, and they went out and hunted and packed. Now they do the same thing, they just end up at a sports bar, right? And they go out, and then there's a pack of guys, and it's the same ritual. They sit at home, they drink a few beers... 
they they uh, they watch a little hockey, which is would have been like uh, you know the shaman's job back in the old days, and they get themselves good and loaded, and then they 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 start talking about their you know potential kills. I'm going to the sports bar. I'm not coming home empty-handed. This time I'm going to score. I've had my eye on that waitress for a while. And they go out and they're hunting. They're packs. They're packs of wild dogs. Packs. You understand? <laughs> okay. okay. But when then someone turns on them, they're confused. They don't know what to do. So I'm scaring them? Well, it, it kind of throws them out of their uh, rhythm. Or that, or, or may, maybe you're sort of projecting some... some uh, but I really in, in, don't think I'm coming off, like, wanting him. <laughs> yeah, but maybe you're projecting some intense feelings, and that would be even more scary. Oh, so I'm scaring him with feelings. Yeah, that he would, A, be afraid to hurt you, and B, more afraid to get, get connected with you on a feeling level himself, and then have to deal with that. Or C, you look bad in jeans. That can throw <laughs> a man's hunting rhythm off as well. <laughs> Men, I to throw it off. They're dumb, but they're not stupid. If, 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 if the prime kill is going to come right... Right in, right into their lair. The, okay. They'll go for it. Okay, well, okay. I've had three <laughs> maybe, maybe to follow, with this young man. Maybe to follow to follow your to follow your analogy, Adam. Maybe it's sort of like you know when when they go after the pack of gazelles, the ones that are easy to catch at the back must be not the good okay. prey. You know? They're the sickly uh, ones. No, they <laughs> fall behind. Oh, they're the big. They can't move as fast. They can't keep up with the more the fitter gazelles. And, but that could that could be a. a, a, a a false, right? A false notion. Uh, coming from you, Drew, it's got to be gospel. So, Gwen? Yeah. Y- y- you have to play a little hard to get in order to awaken the... I uh, swear y- to God. Oh, you have? Yeah. All right, then he doesn't like you. Okay, good. All right? Oh, Great. yeah. <laughs> She's elated. Hey, the guy doesn't like her. Fantastic. I'm Brother. surprised when I'm asked to sign a lady's bosom. <laughs> Adam West, who uh, hopefully will be coming in here and talking about signing ladies' bosoms in person in a few minutes. I don't know if he showed up yet. Sean, 19, you're on the love line. Hey, Doc. Hey, Adam. How you doing? Hey. Um, My question is about my girlfriend. We've been going out for about seven months, and the sex has, like, been really great. But one problem is she will sometimes orgasm, like, too fast. Like within like two or three minutes sometimes and I always wear a condom so I always you know need to go a little bit longer and sometimes she'll just you know want to quit and I and I mean sometimes it's no big deal if I'm really not in the mood but a lot of times it's just she just will kind of like lay there after she has her orgasm and I'll have to like work pretty hard to get mine so I was just wondering I guess my question is how can I like, I don't know, do it so that she doesn't have her orgasm so fast. I mean, well, gee, it sounds like you're you're dating a man, Sean. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I thought, too. When I first started going out with her and when we first started having sex, I was really surprised because I always I always heard that it's, like, really hard to have to make a girl have an orgasm. But she's just really in touch with her body, and it's just, I don't know, she's really... She's really a little too in touch with her body, Sean. She's not. Well, could be a little more in touch with your body, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Being in touch with your body is fine, but when all you end up doing is touching yourself, then it's kind of screwed for your partner. Yeah. And there's nothing. If, if she was so in touch with her body, you'd think she could slow it down a little bit, wouldn't you, Sean? Mm-hmm. Do you think she can? Well, yeah. Usually, we can slow down or. See, because this one time we went really slow, and I and I asked her to, you know, and then it ended up hurting her afterwards, and and she didn't know why, and and it and it like was going fine all the way through, and then. Sean, Sean, you want me to talk to her? <laughs> I think that'd be a good idea. No, nah. Believe me, I'll give her a mantra to chant. She'll she won't orgasm until she's in her forties. But how could I do that? How, how, what can what can she do to like? Uh, well, the uh, 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 that's why I have to talk to her. I will slow her down like a glacier. <laughs> Believe me. Okay, how? I, uh, 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 you think I'm going to give it away to you, Sean? Well, I gotta know. This secret in the wrong hands, especially uh, your hands, which you're using a little too much on yourself, quite frankly, could be very dangerous things, Sean. <laughs> I can only impart this directly to your girlfriend. Do you understand? I guess I understand. All right. So apparently you don't want the answer bad enough. Well, I do. But... All right. Then we're going to put you on hold. 
And you can uh, give your phone number to the lovely Sherry. And I'll, I'll impart my uh, secret advice. Something I haven't done ever on this show. Oh, my goodness. I don't even keep it here in the studio. I have to go yeah, get I've, it. I've never. Oh, really? Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's under my sink with the nudie magazine. So I'm going to have to run home and get it. Keep it in a mason jar. It's hermetically sealed. And we'll be back. Hi, this is Thomas Calabro, Dr. Michael Mancini from Melrose Place, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Oh, that must have been like pulling teeth for that guy. <laughs> he did not want to be here. But he warmed up. His wife was nice anyway. His wife was uh, better than he was. He All was right, nice. let, let, let's not start trouble. They're, they're a joyous group, and we wish them the uh, best. And let me get the phone number out, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310 854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew, the show's love line. And we have another Adam in the studio. That would be Adam West. Yes, I'm here. Uh, you know him as uh, Batman and uh, many other things. And one one thing I'd like to compliment you on. I listened to the uh, cassette today, or both the cassettes. Uh, Adam West remembers 30 years of Batman. And I was not, as I stated at the beginning of the show, I was not a fanatical Batman fan. Liked the show, thought it was kind of neat and innovative. It was fun when I was growing up, but I, I never collected the comics or anything. But the tape was real interesting. Thank to, you. To hear how the thing started and, and to go all through. And, like, I had no idea all the celebrities that had done the cameos on the show and all the and just all the celebrities that were on the show as, as villains and whatnot throughout the years. So it was, uh, it was a good tape. And the compliment is, is I saw the Look Well pilot. That Conan O'Brien uh -huh. wrote or co-wrote for you back in like the mid '80s or late later '80s. Uh, later '80s. Um, as a matter of fact, um, it was almost uh, ninety uh, when we did that for NBC. And um, by the way, the first part of your remark. Thank you very much. And uh, we edited this down. From eight hours of Adam West sitting around and reminiscing about Batman and all those wonderful moments and those days and misadventures, um, from eight hours down to two. So this uh, book on tape is two hours. I'm guessing you, you, you just kept the real good stuff. Well, pretty much, yeah, sure. The, uh, you know, juicier moments. And and it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it wasn't salacious. It wasn't what you'd call a, no, uh, it wasn't like no. that Burt Ward Thing, which, no, I would never trash the show or others who were in it, you know. Right, but it was kind of interesting. A lot of it was just interesting from a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. The costume and the materials and uh, how the set was designed and, and all that stuff. Well, the interesting thing is uh, people over the years always uh, come up to me, uh, usually wherever I am, and ask technical questions. They want to know things that I never even thought about very much, like... Uh, uh, how uncomfortable were the tights? Was the cowl hot inside? What was in the utility belt? Who made the boots? And it goes on and on. What was the car originally? Did you ever get into Julie Newmar's pants? Stuff like that, right? Just her boots. Okay. <laughs> where, where was she wearing her boots? I guess is the question. <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't a uh, like we. Uh, Burt Ward came in and did the morning show here at K Rock. Uh, I guess it was about eight or nine months ago now. And uh, ballooned up, by the way, big man now. <laughs> but um, he came in and he wrote a book. Now, I never read the book, but apparently there was all kinds of stuff in this book and, and uh, lies, I'd imagine you would say. Well, the interesting thing and, and fascinating and probably complimentary in a sense is that Bert referred to me, I think, first of all, he established women as being plankton and I was a giant whale swimming through this plankton <laughs> with my mouth yawning open, consuming uh, millions of tons a week. And wow. Th yeah. You made me sound like a combination of um, a Don Juan DeMarco and Dennis Rodman and Daffy Duck. So, oh, uh, a, very a sperm whale, pardon the pun. Yes, that sort of thing. And I, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even in my utility belt. But you never took in that many women. No, and, you know, speaking of his book, I, I, I know you want to address this thing, and, and uh, it, I think that Bert did somewhat of a disservice to himself because um, there, he could open a deli. There's so much baloney in this book. 
Is, is, let me ask something. I, I think Bert wants a sex change operation. Is, is he? And this, and this, not to disparage him at all. Yes, we don't do that. But is he okay? Is, is he? I mean, really? I mean, is because I there's a little dementia. No, in, not to dementia, him. but there's there's a, there's a real kind of uh, uh, expansiveness. Oh, to he's freaking nuts, is what Drew said. Well, no, I mean, is, is he? I, I, no, no, I mean, yes. not, not, and, and I really don't mean to put Adam on the spot. Has he? Is he okay? I mean, is. Well, I'm not his personal physician, yeah. nor have I observed him uh, at first hand, so to speak, for many years. Uh, I suspect that Bert is not entirely well. Okay, because there's there's such a there's such a distortion. There's such a difference between your perceptions that it it makes me as I'm, and I'm speaking purely in the abstract, not yes. about him necessarily or anybody else, but yes. that but that that kind of expansiveness. And that kind of distortion suggests something, you know, almost biological is causing that. So. I, I could only, uh, I suppose, in the most flattering way I can conjure up, just say that he seems to have a great deal of energy. Well, <laughs> Now, before I go on, I suppose I should consult. Have you met my lawyer, <laughs> manager? Yeah, he's the guy who wouldn't let me in the building. Yeah, this I is came Max. in here about 9.30, I was banging on the door. I was going to let me in. He's like, could you... Show some ID. Well, he has a law degree from Harvard. He's uh, also an ace show business expert. He is a manager and a lawyer. Oh, for Christ's sake, this is the Mr. kiss of death. Mr. Max Pizzazz, gentlemen, and I, I won't go on until I consult with him. Max, come over here, please. Can I say any more about Merit without any trouble? Yeah, you, you can talk about him, but for God's sakes, don't talk about Julie Newmar now. Got it. Don't tell any secrets. Oh, Thank you. Thank oh, you, Max. God, we're on. Yes, you that just, was very discreet. You just slipped me a bill for God's sake. <laughs> oh, the years in the the years in the theater, doing the and probably playing the cat skills. I'm sure <laughs> has trained you for this moment. All right, so Adam, you read Bur Bert's book. We'll move on from Bert, but did you, did you read the book? No. Okay, there's all sorts of stuff about hey, baby slide on the bat pole and all that stuff you probably heard about. Well, yeah, I have heard right. about it. All right, it, right. so it was a travesty all lie. Although you did get a little trim back then. It wasn't something you were, you weren't the sperm whale. You were more uh, a grouper. Well, I'm sure Bert's very, the, the book's very funny. Yeah, okay. Sure. So you look we, at we, it. You know, we had a marvelous time when we did the show. And if. He did it, say that, too, by the way. He, 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 if he things have very, changed. He spoke very positively about the experience. He just had some interesting perceptions of it. Yeah, yeah. If things have changed, I'm a little disappointed uh, because. Uh, uh, the last time we were together, you know, it's like you two guys. The moment you go on the air, you you have this uh, not theatrical reality exactly, but th there is a chemistry. And, well, there's a certain je ne sais quoi that we have, <laughs> I, I've got to believe. I think, I think it's just like the uh, Warner Brothers cartoon with the sheepdog and the coyote. Time to go to work, clock Fred. in, and, <laughs> and then right. it starts. Anyway, Bert is a nice guy, and, and uh, if he's changing, please, Bert, uh, our plea tonight, change back. <laughs> Montana, 20, you're on Love Line with Adam West. And by the way, Sean would not uh, let you talk to the girlfriend. Uh, oh, oh, yes. So. Uh, sorry. Thanks for getting us back to that. Hello. Hi, Montana. How's it going? Good. Say hi to Adam West. Hi, Adam. How you doing? Are you near the Freeman? Havana? What? That, that's just her name. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You're not... Uh, what part of Montana? Um, I don't even live there. Her, her oh. name is Montana. Oh, I'm so sorry. I it's knew a stripper okay. named Montana. Okay. Oh, really? No, yeah. oh, not the whale, huh? It could be me. <laughs> okay, I have a major problem here, okay? I just met, like, the love of my life via, like, a friend, and I've known him for about a week and a half, but we have, like, a, a small problem. Um, he's going to France for two months, and he leaves this Sunday. Um, so we've hung out, like, we hung out all last week, and we had all, like, these clubs and just had, like, a total blast, and he was the one to pursue me. And I was just because I've been kind of dogged out by guys. Yeah. Did of... Did you consummate the relationship? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, and he's and he's going off to France on vacation. No. Well, he's studying. He's going to be studying for two months. Oh, he's going to be studying yeah, uh, he, women's he, walks oh, from exactly. some cafe while yeah, he composes like bad poetry. Intro to anatomy, something like that. I see. Let's go to France. There you go. Yeah. Via the sidewalk. <laughs> So Loaded anyway, on white wine. Yeah, but this guy's really cool. He's older than I am. He's, like, older and stuff. Not that much, but anyway, so we've been hanging out, having a great time, and he's like, you know, I, I really want to see you when you get back, when I get back, and but I don't want to make you, like, promise that you'll be here waiting for me because that's selfish. And I'm like, hey, this guy's kind of cool, you know? Okay, so... Montana, so, Montana. Yeah, that's yeah. Really, it's a two-hour show, please. Okay, it's, I know. I'm, see, I'm bad at, like, telling stories and stuff. They well, that's okay, because I'm interrupting. 
Okay. He'll be back in two months, correct? Yeah, but listen. See, he, okay, so anyways, um, I haven't talked to him in two days. He's, like, leaving this week, so he told me, he's like, I'm going to be busy for the next three days. Um, I'm going to be working my butt off. He's got two jobs. And I haven't talked to him, but I've left messages. And I haven't heard from him, and I'm totally okay. waiting. Uh, all right. But he said he wants to get together before he leaves. Let so, me, am I being a stupid girl? Or yes, what? let me say, there's a French word. It's called uh, finisse. <laughs> is, that, is that French? Fini. Fini. That's yeah. uh, French for uh, um, banging women in France. Yeah, he's not like that, though, I don't think. Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. He should have been returning your calls, Montana. Well, but, but listen, though. I mean, see, all, you know, I'm being a dumb girl. Maybe you should understand it in Italian. But see, uh, Rivaderci? Finito. Finito. He's, 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 um, he told me, like, I know he works till like, 10 at night, and he has two jobs, and I figure... There's life before me. I mean, he's known me for a week and a half. All right, all right. All right. Listen, yeah. listen, Montana. Okay. Please listen. I'm listening. You're working overtime trying to talk yourself into this situation. I, know I am. You're just, you're oh, just spinning your own wheels, hearing your own voice in your own head, and trying to convince yourself as hard as you can that this guy's a great guy. Yeah. Okay. Adam, what do you think? Well, I, I just feel that, um, Montana, you should um, not call him again. Yeah. Uh, he knows that you've called. Uh, let him go to France, and, and uh, you, you go to Walla Walla. But the point oh, is... <laughs> good. That's a good one. Yeah, the point is, uh, you know, it, it just do your best to um, do what comes naturally and next and, and not think too much about him. And, and take it from Adam, he's uh, sucked up more plankton than Jacques Cousteau. Yes, I have, and I've been in France, and and I, I know what happens. You know there. what you know what what, what what where young man's fancies turn to in the city of lights. Well, as a matter of fact, my wife is French, and and uh, we go there every year. So what I'm going to do, uh, Montana, when we go uh, soon, I'm going to look for him. <laughs> where is? <laughs> well, I'm going to keep my eye on him for you, and he'll he'll uh, we'll have Adam West put a hit on him, and uh, <laughs> when we get back, we'll talk a little more to Mr. West. Oh, all right. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks for that cue, Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Adam West. She's Dr. Drew. She's a board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. <laughs> Just making a little fun. He's so much man, you can kid him. Thanks for the memories. Going to go on your uh, tombstone, Doc. Um, Adam West is here. Adam West is uh, basically in here plugging away because he has himself a cassette. Actually, two cassettes, but they come as one. And uh, it's called Adam West Remembers 30 Years of Batman. And I rarely listen to too much material before the guests come into the show because I like to keep it fresh and I'm extra lazy. But I put the cassette in, and the producer gave it to me yesterday. <laughs> and I put it in as sort of like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to skim through it. I'm going to give it a little listen. And I'm going to, you know. And I heard the bat, the bat Tusi theme or the bat theme played at the, at the beginning. And I thought, oh, man, this, this is only for the, for the hardcore. <laughs> right. You really, you really, you got to wear the, the outfit to the convention in order to be into this tape. And I started listening to it. And I was like, all right, I'll give it another 10 minutes. Then I'm going to flip over to the uh, Dina Dell show. <laughs> Because I enjoy the other doctors of the world. <laughs> yes. And I just kept it in all the way home. And then, now this this sounds like BS, but when I popped it out of the, the car, I went to the car wash day, I popped it in a little Walkman and was wow. walking around the car wash listening to it. Huh. And I really enjoyed it. It, uh, it, it it sort of chronicled the whole thing and, and, and gave a lot of neat little stories. And, uh, Adam, you, you did it. And you have a nice narration, a nice narrative voice. And uh, it didn't sound too much like you're reading. Well, and it we, came yeah, across real good. Thank you so much. We, we had about eight hours of material. And um, um, it was edited down to two hours. And I just sat there and, and read it and kind of reminisced. And, and we were just sitting around the campfire there in the bat cave with a can of beans and reminiscing and telling stories and lies. Nah, you yeah. didn't eat any beans before you came in. No, night, certainly though. not. Okay, no, good. it's close quarters here. But... Uh, <laughs> If you want a copy of... My oh, yeah, little, what would that phone number be? How my, do people get hold of that, Adam? A little book on tape. It's a very catchy number. Why don't you give it to the kids? Oh, sure. one It's toll-free. one bat adam 
B- bat Adam or Bad Adam? B- bat to be Adam. Adam. It's easy. Eight, to remember. Eight 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 Bat Adam. Yeah. Bad Adam. They get some stuff about Adam Carolla. I suspect. Right, but uh, Bat with a T. You would get it uh, on Adam West, and you would get it on uh, the Batman years. And it's, we'll, it's my little gift to the fans. Believe me, and it's only nineteen ninety five. Right. So. It's a little gift to the to the savings account too, isn't it? Well, it, it might help. Yes. Okay. It, I have large mortgages, but mostly for the fans. He has kids in college. Yeah, and uh, are they? Are they? You have yeah, kids well, in college? I have uh, uh, two, yes. Not junior college? Uh, no. Okay, no. good. All right, all right. They're not slackers. Maximilian, 16, you're on Love Line with Adam West. Oh, hey, how's it going? Good. Okay, uh, okay I need to speak with Dr. Drew. And yeah, Max, what's up? Uh, I'm very worried. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, anyway, so I've been taking this antibiotic. Actually, I stopped taking it mm-hmm. because, um, well, I noticed that I was getting burning sores on my schwanker. Hmm. And so... And they went away once, and I started taking the medication again. Then it uh, came back again, got progressively worse. And now I have these big red open sores all over my weenie. It's like, ugh, it's terrible. Hmm. Drew? Is that, do you have anything in your mouth? What? Anything in the mouth? Like your weenie? No, no, no. <laughs> Any sores in the mouth? I don't mouth know what you wanted. <laughs> no. Well, I do have those little mouth sores. Because there, there are certain sort of uh, what we call collagen vascular autoimmune reactions where people can get sores yeah. in mouth and genital areas that is not an infectious phenomenon. Um, on the other hand, have you ever had these before? Uh, yeah, I've, I've had these sores a lot. On, on the genitals? No, on, the, on my lips. But how about the genitals? No. Uh, Adam, did the uh, bat shorts ever cause any uh, strange chafing or uh, heat rash or anything like that? Well, I think uh, uh, that's the key word, uh, a bit of chafing, yeah, but I, I, I really um, sympathize out there with you. Golly, uh, not, uh, you know, not being a physician or having examined your groin. Groin, thank you for that. But, but Dr. Drew, please go on. I mean, we've yeah. got to help this. It, well, it, 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 do you have anything on your on your hands at all? Uh, no. No sores on the hands? Um it is possible that somehow you transmitted a, a herpes virus from your mouth to, to the genitals. Yeah. It is possible this is some kind of other disorder, something, you know, as I mentioned, some collagen vascular problem. It's possible this is some kind of peculiar drug reaction. Yeah. You need to go see a doctor so somebody can look at these things. These are, these are, these are distinctions that certainly can't be made on the radio. Are you sexually active? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. So it would, it would have to speculate that it came somehow like sort of what we call an auto-inoculation, that you transmitted yourself, your mouth, to somewhere else. That can happen. There is such a thing. Uh, but it's peculiar that it would be associated with these antibiotics and whatnot. So you get in to see a doctor. I can't sort it out any more for the, than to say there is, it's possibly herpes. It's possibly not. Well, it's an immaculate possibly. lesion is what it is. No, well, it could be an immune reaction, not your own immune system causing it, a rash, really, rather than, rather than a virus causing it. All right, this may not cure the problem, but uh, Adam doesn't listen to the show because he lives in a in a part of the country that does not not get the signal clearly. But I would I would suggest the bat talc, the oh. dumping a little of that down mm, the shorts. Yeah. It certainly couldn't help, mm, right, Drew? Couldn't help. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ducky day. Hey. Twenty three. Yes. I was just wondering, what's the average age of a man? Um, when he loses his sex drive. 23? Ducky, how old are you? 23. Ducky. Yes. Are you, are you, what are you? I'm a female. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. I don't know why Ducky Day, I thought was a, thought yeah, was a thought boy's was, name. Because we had that Ducky fellow in here that, that played Ducky. Oh, yes, yes. I'll come up with his name uh, on brother. the way home. All right. You want to know? <laughs> Ducky. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike. Please, I'm trying to I'm trying to do a straight interview here, Ducky, with a guy named Ducky. W- why do you want to know this? Well, I like dating Ducky. older men, preferably uh-huh. grandpas, mm-hmm. <laughs> and some of them can handle me uh-huh. and they're really good. And other guys, I mean, you can't get nothing to shoot. Well, all right. So I just wonder what wall. age does that? What age you? Poetic. Yeah. What age are you talking about? I mean, what age is the average man not... All right, Ducky, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Just uh, hold still. I'm not sure there's an average age, Ducky, first of all. Uh, some men, men remain sexually active into their 80s. 
Uh, and some have prostate problems when they're 40 and uh, have difficulties. So it depends on the person. It really Ducky. does. Ducky? Yes? Just line up another cigarette. I'm going to talk to Adam for a second. Okay. Uh, Adam, do you, do you mind me uh, asking how old you are? Uh, no, not at all. How old are you? Uh, 57. 57. Mm -hmm. And um, you used to do Batman, I was uh, 30 years ago, so you were 27 about that yeah, time. I was pushing 30, yeah. Okay, and back then, uh, and using your own description, you're a big sex whale. Okay, now... No, 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 it wasn't my description, uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you anyway. Now you're 57, it's 30, it's 30 years later. How how is it? Be candid with us. Are are you still? Do you still feel as virile as you did back then sexually? Uh, absolutely. You do. Yeah, quite frankly. Really, you're 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 ready to go. Uh, yes. If the doc and dropped his pants right now. No. Okay, just check it. Just <laughs> <laughs> check. But for your wife, the mm -hmm. the fire still burns. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you're 57, and and, and you have no sl signs of slowing down. No, and I think uh, that does vary uh, with the individual, definitely. Right, and not everyone is, is Batman in the sack, but there is sex, you know, well into the 70s and, be, and sure. even Absolutely. 80s for a lot of guys. Absolutely. Yeah, I still get curious stirrings in my utility belt. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> I, I heard that's how George Burns died, by the way. He was getting a Hummer. Okay, everyone's pissed off. Guy died when he was 100. Ducky? Yeah. All right. So what should I do? I mean, well, I really like this guy. How old is he? He's 72. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> She's 23. Ducky, what's going on? What does he look like in the nude? Um, wrinkled. Yes. <laughs> All right. The ducky. Ducky's. <laughs> Had it up to here with Ducky. Let's talk to Adam for, well, for another moment. It'd be interesting moment. to talk more to Ducky and find out what is oh, her deal. But uh, Ducky's nuts. That's where she's uh, she's uh, hang, she's hanging out with Burt Ward somewhere in some padded cell. Okay, now Adam. Yes. Now you probably don't want me to bring this up, but Lady Chatterley's Lover. Mm -hmm. that my, do I got the right movie? Mm -hmm. Because I, I saw that when I when I was uh, probably 13. They used to have, like, on TV, it was called, a little cable thing they had out in the valley. Yeah. And the folks would go to bed about 11.30. And about 11.45, I'd slide in the living room. And for a month, they ran this Lady Chatterley's Lover. Now, this is basically... Uh, well, it's a famous story. Drew, you jump in because I didn't, I've never read a book. But basically, this is tasteful. You don't want to call it porn by today's standards. Softcore, tasteful, uh, adult uh, eroticism. I, uh, I think that's a fair description, yeah. Nice uh, costumes. Adult eroticism. It's, it was barely softcore. Uh, no, it wasn't even that. What, what year was that? In the later 70s? Yeah, I think so. And now you, now you didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't go naked or anything. I don't think we got to see you nude, did uh, we? I think there was one scene in which uh, I ran toward a swimming pool with my uh, buns hanging out. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I, <laughs> I didn't feel that it was um, a world turn on. No, though you know, at thirteen, I was really ready to take whatever you could give. <laughs> you know, hey, n nude is nude when you're thirteen. I don't care if it's a Batman's ass or um, what was her name? What was this? What was the beautiful? Uh, oh, uh, 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 Mrs. Chatterley. Yeah, she did the Emmanuel uh, movies too. Did she not? Uh, Adam. Adam. What? God, you're like you're like a library about this kind of material. I know a porn. Yo, indeed you do. But, but no, no, you know, Adam, it wasn't porn. It but, was but, just... but it's where B Adam began his education about this stuff. Evidently, he knows. Yeah. The, he knows. For me, the it was porn. Yeah. yeah it, it, all right. It, it was a it was a whimsical uh, classic tale of uh, two lovers and Adam West ass. Basically, is what it was. But exactly. And all right, all right. Well, forget this line of questioning. It's not going anywhere. But when we come back, we'll we'll plug we'll plug the tape more, and it'll be all better, right? Thank you. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> you know, listening to the lovely tape. Adam West, tapes, I should say. I should correct myself again. Adam West remembers 30 years of Batman. When when Bat, when I saw Batman, I was 10. I, or, you know, I actually, I mean, when it came out in, what, 1966? 
Uh, mid-season, six, 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 seven. Yeah. And uh, isn't that the mark of the devil? I was. <laughs> no, nah, I was no. two years old, but I remember seeing it when I was a little kid. Devil man, what? And I remember thinking to myself, "Ah, oh, this is this is phony. Come on, this is goofy," because I I didn't take it with it from a comedy angle. I didn't know everyone's tongue was in their cheek when they were doing it. I thought it was a serious crime fighting show and a little bit phony for a serious crime fighting. Show, but now that you see it as an adult, you realize it was real innovative television. I, I was like seven years old, and I can I remember I loved it. That age, we really, really oh, stop really. kissing ass, and bro. I remember. You know, I'm just realizing I hear the music. I learned to play it on the piano. That's, that's <laughs> how into it I was. <laughs> I mean, uh, you want to talk about that, Adam? Well, I played it on the drums. No, <laughs> th- there were three ten-year-olds, uh, Adam. I, I, yes, I've heard this before. Three other ten-year-olds who didn't get it. I'm sorry you didn't. <laughs> well, there's four now, buddy. <laughs> we're going to start a support group. Uh, uh, parents of kids who forced them to watch Batman and they didn't get it. You know, I talk about uh, some of this stuff on my uh, n- n- new book. Well, what was the phone number for that tape in case people want to get me, it, let Adam? Let me look it up here. Um, yeah, it's one eight 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 bat Adam, and it's a toll-free number. It's 1995, and by the uh, this is the 30th anniversary uh, of our television show, mm-hmm. and it's playing all over the world, as you probably know, twice a day on FX, and and it was just voted uh, tied with Lucy as the most popular show of all time. Wow! And in wow. a USA Today poll, uh, the most popular show of the last two decades. Huh. So really? you guys were tuned in, I think, to the right show. And we'll be back in 10. Ah, uh, back here with Adam West on Love Line. I'm Adam Crowley. He's Dr. Drew. The phone number, 1-800-LOVE-191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. Reminiscing with Adam West about the cult. Well, anyway, it's not even really cult because it's it's cult, but yet it's it has mainstream, a mass, yeah. mass appeal. It's mainstream, too. Uh, Batman. And we're going to take a few more calls, and later on we'll talk a little more about Batman. Paul, 14, you're on Loveline with Adam West. Uh, yeah. Hi, um, Paul. I'm an anorexic, uh, manic depressive, and mm. I feel that uh, people who uh, hang around me only do it because they feel sorry for me. Hmm. Do you um, confront these people about that? Uh, no, I have been out of the psychiatric ward about a month now. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Who um, Who are these people that hang around you? Um, just uh, girls from school. No, 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 it's not sympathy. Your family hanging around you, that's sympathy. Well, your dog no, hanging around, that's sympathy. No. One of your best friends, that's sympathy. But girls from school hanging around, that's that's not really I, sympathy. Because, no, because I was in the psychiatric ward for attempted suicide and manic episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, but it still doesn't mean they're doing and they're on suicide watch. Paul? Uh, yeah. What makes you think that these people are are just around you for sympathy? Uh, well, <laughs> well, they're around for sympathy. My other friends are around for kicks. Um, <laughs> well, look, just as long as they're around. Look, people hung around Adam West all the time because he was Batman. You think he cared? A ton of women, a little money, the free beer. What the hell? Well, I I know, but uh, it used to be that. Um, my friends would just pop a cigarette in my mouth, and then I would have a nicotine overdose, flip out, and almost kill someone. Uh, so, so you're saying your friends would 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 uh, push push you, on me. push you over? So they were not yeah. not really behaving like friends, right? Uh, but now it's come to a point where they won't let me have any of that. Thing. All right, well that's fine. That's yeah. fine. I, Paul, I, I think you have genuine friends there. I mean, maybe amongst them there are people that make you feel like you're somehow handicapped and that they're treating you with carefully or strangely. And, and you should confront them. You should tell them, hey, look, I, you know, I'm still Paul. Yeah. I've got this thing going on, and, and it's stable right now. But uh, please, you know, let, let's just be friends and uh, don't worry about treating me like I'm gonna made out of porcelain. And if they do treat you differently, it's probably because they care about you. It's not uh, done to... Uh try to um, alienate you from the group, but you've had some problems, 
and they're, they're aware of these problems, and they're probably looking out for you. And you can't approach life from that angle, Paul, that everybody who spends time with you or is involved with you in your life is there for this reason or that reason. Ultimately, they, they would get burnt out on that pretty quickly. They might hang around for an afternoon for some kicks, you know, watch you uh, smoke a Marlboro and kick a little ass. But that gets tiresome after. Actually, I'd, I'd actually do that for a while, but eventually that's going to get tiring. Your Paul. illnesses are okay, Paul? You're stable right now? Uh, yeah, but I'm starting to build up a tolerance to my drugs. What do you want? Uh, Depakote, mm-hmm. Trilophon, and Norpramine. Okay. Very good medications for bipolar. It's a reasonable combination. Bipolars have a tendency to not take their medication. They sort of miss their manias. And uh, be very careful. Be sure you take your medicine. Take them carefully. Follow up with the people that are taking care of you. And after things have been stable for a period of time, I think some of these doubts about your relationships will settle down as they stabilize, too. Maybe we can get Burt Ward on some of those drugs. Dakota, 17, you're nice. on Love Line. Boy, we got all the cities, uh, all the... All the states and cities uh, represented today here on Love Line. In people's first names. Dakota. Yeah. Oh, it's a guy. Okay. Dakota. Cool. All right. Is that your real name? Yes, it is. Because that's a stripper's name. What? Okay, go ahead, Dakota. Um, well, here's my deal. My, I've... All right. I got no time wow. for Dakota. Wow. <laughs> Drew, what is Drew, going what on you, tonight? What kind of calls are you picking tonight? Hey, hey, they look good on paper. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you okay? Don't worry, we're going to give the phone number out in a minute. <laughs> and you're going to do the Batusi for the third time. Yeah, yeah. you got to earn that number. Lori, 19, you're on Love Line with Adam West, Dr. Drew, and Adam Garola. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. <laughs> you guys are like the hardest people to get a hold of. Thank you. <laughs> to be a compliment. Okay, um, I've got kind of a problem. I've, I've been in about three relationships in the past three years. And they're really great for about the first year, and the sex is great. And then about the sixth or ninth month, our total relationship goes downhill. I don't want him to touch me. I don't want him to do anything to me. I don't enjoy sex. And then I end up cheating on him and leaving him for the guy I cheated on him with. Mm -hmm. And you do the same thing with that guy then? Right. Yeah. You repeat this pattern over and over again. It's a pattern. All right, I've said this many, many times uh, on this show. Gentlemen and ladies, if you want to know how your relationship is going to end with your partner, especially if you're you're younger, you're in your early 20s or late teens, just find out how their last couple of relationships ended. Your relationship will end the exact same way. Lori? Yeah. All right. You want to know what's going on? What? You, yeah, you, <laughs> you, all right. You find someone, you get into them, you go nuts for a little while, and then you feel yourself getting too close, so you push them away, and you cheat on them, and you force them out of your life because you're scared to let them in. Am I right, Adam West? No, I think that's accurate, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it's that I'm scared. It's just, I think, I don't know, I mean, the relationship gets kind of boring after a while. Yeah, but boring means empty. Empty means not emotionally connected. And you don't allow that connection to happen because you're afraid of losing it. Or you're afraid of the vulnerability. Drew, delve into her past a little bit, please. Well, I mean, a lot of 19-year-olds do this kind of thing, Adam. It doesn't mean she was traumatized. Or were you? Did you have a, did you have a difficult uh, childhood in any way? No, not really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think by accident, I suspect you, somebody's going to sneak in and uh, you're going to open up to somebody and fi- find a more meaningful relationship. Be be well, more careful. Here, here's here, here's, here's Hold a on, wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Stop punching the mic for uh, Christ's just, sake! Just the, the second third time. time tonight. Second time. Here's a pragmatic piece of advice: Have a moratorium on relationships for a little while. End the one you're in, which you intend to end anyway. Don't jump from relationship to relationship because you are not going to break this pattern. Sit back, be by yourself for a while, find out how you feel about yourself, about your relationships. You may be avoiding some feelings by by sort of addictively or compulsively pursuing these relationships. Figure out what it is you actually want in a relationship and slowly go forward and try to develop that. All right, you're off your, I'm done. You're I'm off done. your pine box for just one minute. You got off the soapbox. The high horse has not gotten out of the barn in a while there, Engineer Mike. Why don't you wake up? Ah! <laughs> Drew's high horse out of the barn. Thank you, Engineer Mike. Let me say this, Drew. Let me, let me, let me, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up something that just jumped into my mind. I can't wait. Okay. When I bring up a person's past, their history. Yeah. You blow it right off. Oh, a lot of 19-year-olds are up to this, this type of nonsense, you say. Mm. In, in, in one ear and out the other. 
when you decide to bring up a person's past, like, for instance, was uh, your dad an alcoholic? Was there any uh, history of alcoholism in the family? You pine away like you dig like a like a 49er until you strike gold. Because I do it when it's appropriate, when it's going to be there. No, no. I don't do it. It's your idea. That's my idea because it's appropriate to bring it up. When I bring it up, it's not appropriate. Correct. You blow it right off. Oh, no, not necessarily the problem. Does, Does Lori have that problem? She, I, I'll tell you, if if you'd brought it up, you would have found the problem. But if I had brought it up because it would have been there somewhere, because oh, there would have a reason right. for it. Okay. There a higher probability oh, of it yes. being there. Okay, Moses, fine. I'm going to talk to Adam West for a minute. You stay over there. Adam? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm so tired of both of you. I just, oh. <laughs> really. I, <laughs> We're going to talk about Batman now. You, you just won't let me say something appropriate. Oh, you are? Yes. Oh. And we're going to talk about... No, no, it's okay. I'm just teasing. But uh, that last call, I think that uh, it's very good advice that she end the relationship and not start another one. Right, because she's into a negative cycle. Of course. And the chain she's must be broken. She's got to break that cycle. And not only that, there are some people, and, and usually rather immaturely, who are afraid to accept love. And... All right, we're done with her. We're going to talk vulnerable. to you again. And I want to, Drew, stop having your own your own conversation with Ann over there. We're trying to do a radio Tell show. Stay over here. You'll be happy with what Ann. All right, is. stay over there and be quiet. Oh, Ann, what do you got? Nothing. Go ahead. All right, Ann just slid in the studio. She's going to hand me something real good. But I brought up uh, uh, Lady Chatterley's Lover and I had poked a little fun at you. But I'm going to bring up a movie that I really enjoyed that you were in recently. Was it called the uh, The New Age? Uh, yeah, I did a picture called The New Age. Right, with um, Peter Weller. Peter Weller, Judy Davis, Michael it, Tolkien written, uh, wrote the script and uh, directed. And it was a real interesting movie and a real funny movie. Mm-hmm. And, and, and kind of, a, I guess you'd call it a dark comedy. Well, yeah, it was a, a darker look at uh, life and uh, what's really happening out there. I mean, if you immersed yourself, if you lived uh, near or on Melrose Avenue for about three years, I suppose you would have understood the picture better. It was a real L.A. Yeah, type of thing. A very hip and, and sophisticated film, I think. And and I think it um, it probably didn't clean up at the box office, but it was well received critically. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went and rented it. I must I must admit, but I enjoyed it. So uh, there is something the new age uh, that Adam West was in that well, uh, he did not bear of, his hiney in. It is, it's true. It is. Unless you get the director's cut, in which case he's <laughs> prancing around naked the entire movie. I've um, been fortunate enough to do uh, three pictures in the last seven months. Oh, really? Yeah, and then I just came back from Canada where I did Goosebumps, you know, the uh, uh, Stein books, and uh, they're very popular. What and, what movies did you do in the and, three movies well, you did in the last the, the seven months? Well, the one I finished looping last night <clears throat> is called Joyride, and uh, no bare buns, oh. but uh, I play a guy who's uh, pretty desperately awful and uh, so it's a different kind of role and you mentioned Chatterley Um, maybe I have no taste but the point is I love to work right and I do just about anything that comes along you're an actor you you act well sure I've been shot out of cannons at circuses uh, you know just anything right and occasionally uh, have to act nude yeah but you learn you know you learn your audience (laughs) you learn your craft and and, uh, you know, I'm ready. All right, now what is that phone number? For, for what? <laughs> <laughs> that phone for, number for Adam, Adam West, West remembers, remembers 30, 30 years, years of Batman. Batman. It's one triple eight bat adam It's toll free. And, oh, for the 30th anniversary of Batman, I have a new um, picture book coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, exclusive, uh, never-before-seen photos and, and from Batman. Are you... I mean, I know residuals uh, weren't th- what residuals are today. Yeah, Meaning, why... if you'd done this show, three three series, if you'd done it from uh, 93 to 96, and then it went out, you'd just be sitting home laughing. There's no way we'd get you on this radio show. No, no, I'd do it anyway. Oh, you'd be rich. You'd no, laugh. No, you'd probably no, kill rich. yourself no, with I cocaine like or something. To... No, I just like to work. I really do, and it's uh, fun. Okay. Every every show's a challenge, and, and I, you know, I figure it just kind of keeps me fresh. All right, you speaking, know, dealing with you two, this is not easy. Speaking of uh, fresh, producer Ann has slid into the studio and has, uh, oh, well. <laughs> now, uh, I'll explain what this is in just a second. Uh, Ann, do you have uh, the other uh, Drew's picture 
uh, drew a senior portrait for what happened to that thing? Did uh, Lycus eat it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? All right. The point is, is uh, about three or f- uh, two or two or three nights ago. Uh, night. Was it was it only last night? I thought it was the night last before. Night before. Uh, some good-hearted uh, Loveline fan, a guy who actually attends the uh, girls' school that Drew went to when he was uh, in high school, or actually all the way through, Drew went to this sort of exclusive uh, prep school where y- you start in, like, uh, the kindergarten and you go all the way through high school. And uh, he was a uh, the class um, president. And they faxed in his senior portrait, and you've never seen a goofier thing in your life. The guy had a uh, collar bigger than um, Robert Urich's in uh, in Vegas, if you remember the series. He had a uh, shirt that looked like uh, uh, oh, it was it was uh, Timothy Leary uh, meets uh, the Marlboro Man, and. And, and then some. And he had his hair uh, parted in uh, Fort Lauderdale and combed, actually parted below his right ear somehow. <laughs> he was a mess. He was a little overweight and he had hair down to his shoulders. He was a complete mess. And now I found you've seen this. an even messier picture. Drew Pinsky. Whoops. Mike, can you dump that? It's all right. Okay. Oh, you don't mind? Right. Okay, sorry. I was just reading. Uh, Dr. Drew, 1973, freshman year. Here he is, looking like a uh, young, confused adolescent. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute, that's the Unabomber. <laughs> it really looks like a composite. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what you can blossom into? Look at him now, Adam. Look how attractive uh, Dr. Drew is. You got a haircut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and a facelift and a nose job. All right, we're getting back to the phones now. Enough in- indulging in our, in uh. our young Drew. Chris, 19, you're on the love line with Adam West. Oh, funny. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Um, first of all, I just want to say you guys are great, and uh, Batman rules. Thank you. No I'm, I'm thanking you for Adam, by the way. He was adjusting his headset. <laughs> all right. Um, well, my problem is it's more or less for Dr. Drew. Mm. Um, I have this thing. Um, I don't know if it's an anxiety problem or, or something like that. Um, sometimes I do it unconsciously. I'll... Um, sitting down and I'll just start um, pulling out my hair. From your head? From my head. Not your eyebrows yeah, or eyelashes? Not my eyebrows or any other hair. It's from my head. Okay. And um, uh, I like my hair. You know, I have nice long hair. And, uh, you know, sometimes I pull it out and I'm getting a little bald spot, you know, and it bothers me because, you know, I don't want to do it. Do but, you have any other kinds of obsessive thoughts or compulsive behaviors? Do you hand wash a lot or do you have thoughts that sort of intrude into your thinking? No. No. This no. is the only thing. This is the only thing. Do you use any drugs? Um, mm, yeah, I smoke some marijuana. Every day? Not every day. Most days? No, not most days. Okay. Just, you know. Whatever. All right, occasionally. Yeah. All right. Well, this is called trichotillomania, which is hair pulling, basically. It's a fancy name for people. Yeah, it has a name. And uh, it is associated with obsessive compulsive disorders. It, it can be an anxiety thing, as you put it. And it has treatments. It's thought to be largely a biological phenomenon yeah. ha- has psychological basis to it but it can be treated with medication so there's something i can do for it. yeah you should see a psychiatrist you really should because it can be treated and it should be treated what, what's the medication do drew it, it blocks the chemical message basically that that uh, is responsible for this behavior and that's all it does i mean it doesn't alter your your, your mood in other ways mm-hmm. it can it can it can be some other mood elevators that do that help this but this stops you from going for the hair I mean, for instance, Prozac does stops this sort of thing. It's one of the medications that will, will help. But they have a, a medication specifically designed for the uh, this this disease. No, it has other applications. Okay, so just take what he's got, basically. <laughs> Whatever you say, Adam. Derek, twenty-two, you're on Love Line with Adam West. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Um, I have a question for you. Maybe you can help me with um, my girlfriend and I. When we go out a lot uh, with my friends and the parties and bars and stuff, um, when she drinks, she becomes uh, I don't. Know, a bitch. Um, everybody's an asshole to her, especially me. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I can't really tell her not to drink because we have a good time when we go out. You mean uh, everyone becomes an asshole in her eyes when she's drunk? Right. Mainly just me, though. I mean, well, sure. She's around me. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so I don't know what to do. I mean, we, like I said, we have a good time when we go out. We drink. We have fun just like anybody else. But uh, actually, tonight even, we just got away from each other and. I asked her to come over for a little while, and she said uh, no, and she just went straight home. Well, let me tell you, there's two things women do when they get drunk. 
Yeah. They either uh, turn on you, mm-hmm. or they start yelling horribly embarrassing thing, embarrassing things about you, uh, where other people can hear it. Definitely wouldn't want that. Uh, how small your penis is. <laughs> the time uh, they caught you uh, wearing uh, your, your mom's uh, moo moo and crying in front of the mirror. It, it really, getting women drunk. Uh, guys think it's good. Guys. It, you know, guys think, okay, I'm going to get her drunk. I'm going to get some sex. This is going to be great. She's going to loosen up. But it it doesn't usually work out. And and after you've already in, initiated the relationship and you're already getting the regular sex, right? there's no reason to get them drunk anymore. Right. No, you know you're going home to have sex. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's no even real reason to leave the house. Yeah. You, well, do you understand, well, Derek? Adam, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I don't go out. I don't go out to you know. I mean, we like I said, we just go out to socially drink and stuff with with friends. I mean, I, of course, I don't try to get her drunk or anything. I don't. I, we don't need that. But but, you, but Derek, haven't you learned your lesson? Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm, how am I supposed to tell her not to drink when we're having fun and you know she's having a good time? Right, but it'll always. I, I've, I've dated women like this. It always comes back to haunt you. Yeah. And and uh, they get surly. Yeah. A lot of guys get surly too, but they they they're smart enough to go, you know, they do it in other more constructive ways. They urinate on their buddy's uh pants when they're at the urinal. That's right. how a man projects his his drunkenness. Women go after their boyfriend or husband. Well, is there I mean, is there anything that I can do while we're together? I mean, I'd rather not separate myself from her because I love her. But uh, is there anything I can do, like, without making myself seem like I'm getting stepped on because I feel like I am. I feel like I'm settling for stuff. When, uh, when we're together, like I'm apologizing for doing nothing. Well, I would definitely talk to her when she's sober yeah. and see if you could set some ground rules. And then when she has a few beers, you can basically say to her, listen, remember we talked about yeah, this? these are the rules. I'm not going to be around for any of this crap. And uh, leave. And, the, you know, you, the, you, these are consequences of that kind of behavior. You can't let her get away with it without a consequence. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's what, Drew? Recoculous. Thank you. Adam? Do you ever, has uh, your wife ever, uh, I mean, you, you going to France often with your, your wife is from France, correct? Yeah. She enjoys a uh, little uh, vino every once in a while. Yeah, but. Do you uh, ever get out of line? No, like most uh, Europeans, uh, she's very sophisticated in that area. And, right, because and, she was getting uh, loaded when she was 11 over there in France. Well, no, she never got loaded, and, and I guess I'm the one that's uh, usually out of line. Do you, you, do you ever get real loaded and start going in like a Batman thing and uh, grabbing people by the lapel and yelling uh, that Val Kilmer's a pussy, I'm the real? you ever do any tirades like that? Yeah, I suppose that's why I don't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. That's her that's no. favorite man. I kick that Tim uh, Burton's ass. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing like that. I don't know. You might find a twin and try to date her. <laughs> but, yeah, you need a drunk girlfriend and a sober girlfriend. <laughs> gotcha. All right, Derek. Multiplicity. Sorry. It's the way to go. Hey. Hey, we're back, and there's more people in this studio than than uh, the time we had Goldfinger in here. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the phone number. 310-854-4455 is the fax number. I am Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew, and he is Adam West. And Adam West is here tonight telling us a little about the old Batman days and uh, talking also about about his uh, new cassettes, which is uh, entitled Adam West Remembers 30 Years of Batman, which I listened to uh, all today and which I really enjoyed. And like I said, I wasn't a big fan of the show, and that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the show. It's just I, I wouldn't call myself a Batman fanatic, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. And uh, fascinating how, how this thing was all put together and, and the people that were involved with it and was really surprised. And, Adam, you know better than I, but some of the, some of the celebrities that were on this show over, over its uh, three-year span. We had, uh, I think, over 250 guest stars. Yeah, now, some of those people would just appear out of windows as you yes. were going up the side of buildings, right? right? They, yeah. they were the occasional uh, uh, window popper outers right. and, and uh, you know, Batman and Robin doing their famous wall walk. You never knew who was going to open a window and, and greet us. 
But even as some of the regular villains in the show, I mean, Cesar Romero. Uh -huh. Frank and, Garshin is, um, as Riddler. Right. He's marvelous. And uh, <laughs> the penguin uh, whose name escapes Burgess me right Meredith. now. Burgess Meredith. I mean, these... uh, yeah, yeah. No. And uh, we had Liberace. <laughs> as... You did? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. no, not that personally, Delato, <laughs> but uh, he would have really enjoyed you. <laughs> uh, Liberace is the great Chandel, and I, we everyone from Joan Collins to Ethel Merman to Jerry Lewis, it just went on and on. Which is funny because um, it, it became a really hip show to be seen on. I mean, whereas most celebrities, at least these days, are sort of ducking TV. I mean, like, I mean, let, let's just let's. No, talk. you'll find that more um, um, motion picture stars, film stars, want to do television now than ever before. Right, but let's and let's talk about today's by today's standards, or or let's let's fast forward thirty years and say you're doing a TV show. Uh -huh. Do you think you're going to get you know Tom Cruise and and yes. uh, and yes. Schwarzenegger yes. to do it? Really? Yes. But how come shows. I don't see them on? Well, you anything? do. Friends, for example. Um, right. Well, probably because you're here solving people's problems every night, and you don't watch. What is this thing called, Friends? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, all right, so you just totally destroyed it, my point. Well, but I was I, coming I out so, as a form of a compliment. In, in those days, usually actors want to do shows that are hot, right? And uh, I think one of the reasons they wanted to do Batman was because they could sit around and watch it with their children, mm. their grandchildren. And they had this uh, kind of commonality, things they could, a uh, thing they could do together. And it, enjoy. Was, it was a phenomenon. It's like yes, it people, was. people used to do cameos on on Laugh In too. Right, uh -huh. Real, it's the same That's kind right. of thing. And you know, politicians would do them even sometimes. Well, you were saying that uh, who was it? Robert Kennedy in the in uh -huh. the tape had some. In oh, Drew sorry, punched a mic sorry. for now the third time. We need to keep the uh, Drew. It's good exercise. Drew. We need you to keep check the tote board. Mic. How many times has Drew punched a mic tonight? Oh, three times. Too weird. <laughs> Yeah, All I right. just read something, and in um, the 60s, there were the three Bs. What were they? Beating, the biting, and no, no, no. arithmetic? <laughs> I don't know. Beetle Bond, Beatles, Bond, and Batman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, Beatles what? The Beatles, Bond, and Batman. Oh, Bud. Uh -huh. Bond. <laughs> Bond. Bond. Oh, Bond. I thought you said Bud. No. Because Bond, it, when I grew Bond. up, it was gas, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free. <laughs> but that, that could have okay. been a that, that was a different time. I'm leaving now. Oh yes, you have to leave. But wait a minute. What? You can't leave. You have a phone number to give out, Adam. Oh, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> wait a minute. I'll give it out. One eight 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 Bad Adam, and that would be B A T Adam, and that will uh, that is a toll free number, and you can call that, and you can line yourself up to get yourself one of these lovely. Uh, Cassettes, which I'm sure will be uh, worth more than the uh, pittance uh, of yeah. 1995 that they're going for. Well, I'm really not glad Not including you, shipping and handling I'm today. glad you enjoy it, but I do want to say before I go, uh, the best with that new show, your new television oh, show. Oh, well, thank you. So on. I was really fascinated being here. And would you like to come on and be a, be a guest? Of course. I'm, I'm going to have to clear it with the studio guys, but yeah, yeah, I think I it would be fun to have you on. <laughs> okay. Also, later in the show, I'll be selling my Batman cassette <laughs> for eighteen ninety five for anyone who's interested. Well, because... if you want another, I have a website, too. Oh, well, oh. why don't you give that number this out? This is Batman in deep cyberspace, baby. Okay. Can you yeah. order the, the tape through the website? Uh-huh. And a lot of other stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, just... What's the website? The website is uh, adamwest.com, H-T-T-P slash slash www.adamwest.com. Pure West, as they said in The Simpsons. Isn't that funny? Love The Simpsons. I had a couple of guys like you, really, much like you two, the personalities, come up to me in Canada about three months ago, and they handed me their cart, and they have a graphic design studio that's doing very well, and I noticed the name of their enterprise, their company, is Pure West. And I said, how'd you get a name like Pure West? And they said, because of what you said on The Simpsons, Mr. West. <laughs> it's just Pure West. <laughs> it was a, it was an awesome episodes and, uh, episode, and I love all The Simpsons episodes, yeah, but that especially really was a good one. And uh, I also loved uh, The Critic that you're in, too. Yeah, with Johnny Lovitz. Love that show. All right. Thank you. All right, I, now I get... just finished playing a fox, Mia Farrow's Lover. Really? Uh huh. Little uh, for Disney. Little uh, Redo. Little Redux. Riding Hood. When is it's this? The new version of Red Riding. Hood. Is it going to be like like a, like one of their shorts or going to be a full length? Oh, I think it's a full length dealing. Wow. And um, 
I play her foxy lover, a little fox that she loves to cuddle in her lap and who talks. When is this coming out? Kind of like this, Red. Huh? <laughs> You're scaring me now. <laughs> when is this due to come out? Ding. Uh, I'm not sure. You know what? I just... Because Drew maybe has maybe triplets. Maybe Drew has three triplets. They're th- three triplets. There's three, <laughs> three nine triplets. Kids? No, uh-huh. no, he has triplets. They're three years old. They're nude most of the time, but they go nuts for Disney. the Disney uh, stuff. And uh-huh. if you could give him some kind of advanced screening oh, bootleg great. something, he'll give you a really? free prostate check. You know what? <laughs> I will never bend over in here again. <laughs> uh, again. Notice he said again. Yes, again, because I'm getting my hat and leaving now. All right. Uh, well, you're, Thanks, guys, you're excused. Really. I, I enjoyed it. It was really fun. We thank you for coming in. Everyone, uh, get this tape. It really was enjoyable. Uh, do the Batusi at home, and uh, we'll be back with more Love I'll Line. I'll just Batusi on out of here. Greetings, citizens. Space Ghost here, and you're listening to Nighttime Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. It's swell. Tomorrow night. Experience complete enjoyment with your duder. Guest. It's peppy. Would be. Fun and informative. The. You can learn about your tinkies. Jeff. Or perhaps your wonky. Tones. Or maybe why your twinkie won't swell. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's much better than I am. 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 3108544455. Remember what your grandma said. Yeah. My grandma said if they're going to get rid of one of you, it's not going to be Drew. Booze him. Oh. Painful. Do you realize the kind of family I come from? Uh, yeah. What kind of family is that when your own grandmother cannot get with the program? Is not on your side? Hmm. Imagine that. <laughs> I remember um, when we used to do the show with Ricky. Yeah. And I came home. I was on weekend. I was a little frustrated or something. And I was talking to my grandma, and she said, how's the show going? And I said, well, it's tough because he does a lot of talking. I don't get to, you know, there were three of us in here. It was a little crowded. And I said, I don't always, I'm frustrated because I don't get to say what I want to say. I think he, he does too much talking. And she said, well, I bet he thinks the same thing about you. <laughs> I was like, what kind of crap is that, Grandma? I looked, I, that was it with that. I said, are you nuts? Come on. I can't even get my own grandma in my court. Wow. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can. Wait, let's go on. We haven't had a call in half an hour. Come on, let's go. <laughs> wow. I was having fun with Adam West. I know you were. Uh, Michelle, 21, you're on Loveline. Um, yeah, I need some advice from you guys. I'm together with a guy named Brian, and for a year we've been having a long-distance relationship, but prior to that we've had a relationship for five years, Mm. and I've known him for almost eight years. All right, so you knew him when you were a zygote, (laughs) essentially. Oh, and then, 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 I can't stand everyone and they go, okay. Shouldn't know what a zygote was. All right, so then just go do that stupid fake laugh that I do when I don't understand something. Okay. Oh, for Christ's sake. Since you were an embryo, okay? Since you were in the uterus. Since you were, like, smaller than you were when you were born. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyway, he he moved to New York, and yesterday I got a letter from him saying that we need to see other people, meaning he wants to break up with me. And that, that's kind of what happens with long-distance relationships at your age. I but mean, I, we were going to, I was going to move out there and we were going to get married. We had already oh. planned all of this. No. Oh. And let me tell well, you. He sent you a letter with that. Oh. Yeah. And let me tell you what, uh, we need to see other people. Well, let me translate that. <clears throat> I've started seeing other people. Right. That's what we need to see other people mean. A.K.A. finito. And by the way, they ought to just say, I would like to see other people. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason you need to see other people. They need to make decisions for you, too. But I think they're just being polite when they say we. Well, they're saying you better be- or else you're going to be hurt more. Okay. So, Michelle. Yeah. It's over, baby. There's, like, no chance. I mean. Don't do it. supposed to get married. No. I know. No. Believe me. And I was, you know, I was going to live on Hawaii off the fat of the land with my good buddy Davey. <laughs> that was my plan when I was nine. We're going to move to Hawaii. We're going to live out in the jungle like Robinson Crusoe. It didn't wow. work. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right? But you know what? It's going to be for the best. Long. I know it, it's ridiculous to even 
have somebody say that to you now. It hurts so much. But uh, would you would you even bother contacting him? I mean, would you yeah, I think you deserve that. I mean, I think it's pretty pretty weak of him to to just deliver it in a letter. It is. Uh, but yeah, I think you need some closure here. I think you need to at least have a phone call. Probably you'll need some face to face stuff. But yeah, but uh, let me tell you. But don't great. try to rekindle it. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. But but the sort of catch twenty two of having the closure meeting as it were the closure phone call the right. closure letter the closure lunch yeah. is you go in with an agenda yeah. if you don't have an agenda somehow you're not interested in closure that's right which is kind of weird meaning if you don't want to get back together with the person or you don't want to mace the person and then kick them while they flail about on the restaurant floor you don't want to have the closure then meeting. you don't want to have the meeting you're like oh, no, forget it <laughs> yeah screw them well, we'll just move th- th- on that's okay if that's what you if that's what she needs but she really sounds like she needs to have something I mean, you, it's it's almost like, uh, you know, it's a it's a big loss, and I'm sure she wants to at least have that confirmed by the person. Tom, seventeen, you're on Love Line. Tom's asleep. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah uh, I can hear breathing. You can. Tom. I farted. Could that have been? What that could have been it. That might have been it. All right. Uh, Engineer Mike, who's uh, dutifully looking for the siren. Don't play it yet, Engineer Mike. I I, I think I'm going (laughs) to... That's not the card I was looking for, Mike, but I'm going to give a little of my subliminal suggestions to to, uh, Tom over here. Interestingly enough, uh, Tom's uh, call had to do with uh, the the ills of pot smoking. Imagine that. Imagine that. I'm sure the house is ablaze as we speak as the joint rolled out of his mouth and caught the uh, bad white trash sofa on fire he dozed off on. But I'm guessing Tom can hear me in his own way. You know how that is. You fall asleep. The neighbor uh, fires up uh, the hedge trimmer because I sleep during the day. And I just work that right on into my dream. There I am chasing a half-naked Adrian Barbeau. And all of a sudden she has a chainsaw in her hand because the goddamn neighbor's trimming the hedge back. But I'm going to work my little magic into Tom's cerebellum here. Tom. This... Is the imp that lives on your shoulder. I don't know why to scratch that. <laughs> Tom. This is Tommy. The good Tom that lives inside of your head. The part that knows right from wrong. The part that knows good from evil. The part that knows up from down. The part that is going to steer you through the straits of life. The difficulties. There are going to be many challenges, challenges as. <laughs> There'll be a lot of challenging stuff in your life, Tom. There'll be the allure of illicit drugs, marijuana being at the top of the list. Your friends will coax you into smoking this. They will, they will, uh, they will use their peer pressure to attempt to get you involved with this drug, which you're already deeply involved in. But I'm telling you as your inner self and your unstoned self to put down the bong, to put down the joint, the hooter, the roach, the bud. And to pick up the Bible and to start reading about a man named Jesus Christ and his life and his ways and the people he touched. Even God himself endorses whacking. (laughs) And learning and then growing a beard and going to school tomorrow I'm <laughs> Tom Tom okay well no to grow a beard let's grow a beard grow a beard and I was going to tell him to go to school and start spreading the good news like a like a uh, obsessed religious maniac Tracy 34 you're on love line hi hey how are you good um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Tracy, you lesbian? No. Okay. Why? Why are you asking that? I don't know. Just jumped into my just head. Just a vibe, huh? It Why just, are you asking that? It just, you just, it just, let, you, you said two words, I went, hup, lesbian. Okay. Okay, but go ahead. <laughs> um, Dr. Drew, um, I was, uh, molested and abused a lot when I was young, uh, raped, 
you name it. How old were you when it. it's how old were you when it started? Uh, four. Three. And was it family members or what? Yeah, it started with family members. Wow. Anyway, um, because of this, I was burned in my vaginal area with um, repeatedly with hot, like scalding compresses. Like cigarettes and things, you mean? Or? No, scalding compresses. Why? <laughs> If I knew all of these answers, then I probably wouldn't be. Well, honest. what was the attempt? I mean, was it medicinal, or were they trying to hurt you with these hot compresses? I think that it was an attempt to um, keep from having to take me into the doctor a lot, you know, because of infection and things like that. And that was a result of them having sex with you? Right. Who, who's them, by the way? Well, uh, my uncle, who's deceased now, my father, wow. um, some other family members. Sheesh. Oh. I'm so anyway. sorry. Well, I am too, really. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I've spent the last six years in therapy, so. Have you been in and out of hospitals and things too? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, you know, it, it's, it, you, you can't go through that kind of terrible abuse and, and not... Not have consequence, not not have emotional scars, and, not, and imagine the the crap that was done to these uh, uncles and dads coming up to uh, to make in, them make way. them initiate that kind of thing with their own family. Yeah. 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 All right, but anyway. But my problem, this is my problem, is um, I can't achieve orgasm without using um, a vibrator and it taking a really long, long long time well i've never been able to achieve an orgasm with um, a man with a man just one-on-one are you can you even can you have a relationship um interesting question i don't know have <laughs> I've you had relationships in the past that have not been successful right I've yeah, had well, abusive relationships so of course oh of course. okay um that haven't been successful and then i spent um 13 years living with a gay man hmm. you know Right, because yeah. it was safe. Because it was, yeah, because it was safe. Most of my friends, and maybe this is where you get it. Most of my friends are gay, but they're mostly men. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. I got a little, you know, some but little gay I'm thing. I'm not a lesbian. I'm not gay. All right. Well, now well, you know. I feel like a big a hole now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. I mean, believe me, I didn't know the the atrocities. I mean, you're. This is horrible. Well, I'll tell you what, you're, you're lucky that you can have relations, that you're able to be physically intimate with people, that you can't even achieve orgasm. Well, that, I that's a f- let, me, let me rephrase. I have not been physically intimate for eight years. I, I just, which is good while you went through therapy and tried to sort things out because you would tend to, sort of that would tend to be dysfunctional itself. You know, you'd choose the wrong people. It would not be a real productive right. relationship. But, I mean, you're able to. I mean, and you are in therapy and you are getting better and you can achieve orgasm. I mean, these are very positive things. I... You know, I, 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 I don't know quite how to put it. You shouldn't expect that things are going to function perfectly after that kind of a history. You know, there's going to be some impairment of those functions. But you're, you're there. I mean, you can, you can have those functions. They will work for you. You have to work at it more, but I, I imagine you have to work at everything insofar it relates to interpersonal relations. Where's your dad now? Um, well, he's alive. Yeah. Uh, do you have a relationship with I him? I don't. I do have a relationship with him. Wow. But not um, a close relationship as far as, you know, I talk to him. Did you, uh, has he sought treatment? Did he do any jail time? I mean, um, what happened? He did some jail time when I was um, very, very young for raping someone else. Wow. And, um, oh. and you know, I don't. I don't know. Family dynamics are so strange, you know. Yeah. You, you know. I. I mean, this may sound very strange, but I. I love him. He's my father. Yeah. Know? Right. That's right. And that. That's. That's. If. If you just hated him, it'd be a lot easier. I'll tell you, my grandma never. Right. Never raped me, and I. I'm like just sort of so so about her. <laughs> but you know, I do love him. He's my yeah. father. He yeah. did a lot of things for me. Besides. What the awful things he did to uh, me. All know, right, but the, yeah, well, yes, but they're all eclipsed a million times over by what he did. Although, I mean, you can make the argument that this guy was probably a, a victim of abuse as well, right. and you can sort of uh, if, feel sorry for him. But you can't justify it. But you can't justify it. 
Well, you know what they say, you hate the sin but love the sinner, so to speak. Mm, no. All right, well, Tracy, no. I wouldn't, yeah, all right, but anyway. You, you have to forgive, at some point you have to forgive people. You yeah. do, so yeah. you can move on, because yeah. otherwise they just to, consume your life. Yeah. Right, you know, I ha- I mean, it just, it does, it does nothing but... For a long time, I was just real bitter, and it sure. did nothing but tear me up. Well, congratulate, uh, Tracy. I, uh, to me, I, I, I as as t- tough and as painful as these things are to even hear about, I feel kind of uplifted by your call. The fact that you're in treatment, you're getting better, you can have relationships, you have great insights into these things, you're you're moving forward. I mean, it takes a long time and a lot of work, and it's very painful to get through these things. But it sounds like you're moving in the right direction, and, most most definitely. Uh, ultimately. And uh, you certainly wouldn't wish this on anybody, but people like Tracy end up probably knowing themselves and knowing human nature and being a little more in tune and in touch than people that didn't, that just sort of cruised through life yeah. because she had to examine the uh, dark underbelly of yeah. life and her life. I mean, she had to go into therapy and dissect her life, dissect her family. Uh, dynamic and look into things that other people just sort of cure with a beer and a joint and some TV. And ultimately, it, it, it's, there's a catch-22 because Tracy is, is scarred and those scars will never go away. But I'll bet you if you just sat down and talked with her, as, as we just did, she's more a, 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 um, alert, she's more in tune with her own emotions, and 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 ultimately probably knows more about life without trying to sound cliche than the average person in just sort of middle class family and cruise through life and yeah, never took yeah. a look at anything. So at least there's that consolation. Well, no time for any more calls, just time for uh some thanks. And uh, actually, uh, this fax, which I've uh, resurrected, uh, I, I don't know if I talked about it on the air, but I, I was I was talking on the air about uh, during one of my tirades about a week ago how I wanted a uh, handicapped parking plate that I put on the dashboard of the car because uh, my ass is hairy. And I think it's it, let's face it, it's not quite as easy to move around. People stare. They point. They laugh. I need a customized van to get in and out. <laughs> and I want my own... I want to be able to utilize the handicapped parking. That's a dream of mine. And then here's a lovely uh, rendition uh, via the facts of a uh, stick figure with a little hair on the butt. And anyway, it's something I can fold in half and uh, put so on it, put on the dash. It'd you know? be right. It'd be on the plate. Uh, no phone number, no fax number. I want to thank Adam West for coming in here and uh, having a good time with us media whore that he is. Oh, he was a nice guy. He was a nice guy, and I don't really mean that in a bad way. I uh, want to thank the lovely Lisa for doing the phones tonight, the beautiful Sherry for doing the phones tonight, the angular one, and for getting down tonight, producing the show and doing a wonderful job as always, the one nut wonder engineer Mike for uh, being on his toes tonight and smoking a little hooch. I want to thank myself, Adam Carolla, and Dr. Drew for coming in here and not calling in sick. Again, tomorrow the Deftones will be in studio, and we will talk to you then. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.